the you know the overarching idea was the, what information is captured by the structure of the Chinese script itself in terms of phonology, right? And then that led us to, uh, I mean, through this kind of spiral process, let's say, we say, oh, it's uh, the rhyme and the position of articulation of the initial. And then we find cases where we think we're, we're, we're using the middle Chinese reading, this, that's not true. Uh, but then we come up with proposals that uh, make it true. So then it is true. Yeah. Uh, so uh, now the question that I want to ask is sort of how do we, I mean, in a sense, uh, one of the disadvantages to uh, non sinologists using uh, Chinese data is that the Chinese characters are inscrutable. So one question then is how can we kind of transliterate Chinese characters? to actually represent what phonetic information uh, is in them. And, and one way of putting that is like to model the experience of reading on the part of a, an old Chinese uh, speaker yeah, or an old Chinese reader. Okay. So that's my goal is to find a romanization for Chinese characters here. And uh, this is, you know, I, you, you've read potentially an article that I wrote to, 2015 about this because I assigned it. Um, and my thinking basically hasn't changed, uh, but I sort of put it aside for a while and then now I'm trying to do it more comprehensively uh, with the intention of then using that from here on out. Yeah. Although I think I haven't actually succeeded at that uh, so well because uh, it's a lot of work and it doesn't matter that often. But so uh, we remind ourselves of the Shaking hypothesis. So characters with the same phonetic would rhyme in the churching and have homo organic initials. Uh, and then another way of, under, of of putting that same observation of, you know, that a Shaysheng theory specifies a rhyme and an initial is that it specifies a syllable type. So each uh, Shaysheng series should specify a syllable type, yeah? So uh, just giving an example, you know, <clears throat> this is a theory that we've seen before. So, looking at the, the middle Chinese theory, we have, you know, bie and bie and bie and xie. Now, uh, if I take these back to old Chinese, uh, you see what's there. Uh, but I should say, like, this, this uh, is intended as a kind of heuristic for the time being. So, I'm just projecting the initials back according to. The lecture that I gave yesterday, and then the rhymes you would you would not have any way of, of knowing that that final ya was there. Um, but I, I thought it was better to put it there than than to make you think that uh, it, it wasn't there. Yeah. Uh, but in any case, uh, you know the the Shishan hypothesis is telling us that everything in this series is somehow pay where I'm using the capital P to mean, you know, uh, under specified uh, manner of articulation, right? So uh, one Shishun series, one syllable type. And then there's another series we've seen before uh, where now, you know, I'm reconstructing, let's say the palatals to back to dentals and the red flexes back to uh, dental followed by a medial glide. And then we can say that this series specified a syllable like Q, Q, yeah? So uh, there you go. I think I've got a couple more. Yeah, so here's another one. Uh, you know, we, 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 we looked at it last time in terms of motivating the reconstruction of uh, voiceless resonance. Uh, but uh, now I'm looking at it just to make the point that this, this um, character, this, this phonetic, uh, specifies the syllable knock. Yeah. So um, now the uh, so someone online, uh, you haven't muted yourself, and we're getting a little bit of feedback, so you could uh, check that if you want. Uh, but now I'll point out that it's a little bit more complicated than that. And you, you know this already, that 
series have subseries. Yeah. So, uh, so, uh, so here is the series A, right? Uh, and a character like this means so morphine pronounced like A that means something like clothing, right? Uh, so, uh, yeah. Sorry, I, I haven't gotten to subseries yet. I'm just telling you how we're romanizing, right? So um, I propose a, a romanization that it captures these two features. So uh, it's it's pronounced something like pay. So we write pay, P A Y, yeah, uh, and then it means something to be closing. So I write vestimentum in in, the, in superscript. Now some people have questioned my choice of Latin for this. Uh, but I think it's perfect uh, for, for three reasons. One is it's not Chinese. One is that it's not English. Uh, and one is that Latin serves a similar purpose in romanizations of other languages like, uh, I don't know, I should have checked this, uh, Lydian, maybe? Hieroglyphic Luvian. Yeah, hieroglyphic, hieroglyphic Luvian, yeah. So, um, you know, if you don't, if you don't like it, then you know, you can lead your life however you want to. Uh, but I think there are certain advantages to Latin uh, here, yeah. So, uh, but I, I do think that this is too long, right? That if we, if you read a whole document and every time you had this little uh, uh, semantic radical, you saw this as a whole vestimentum, then uh, that would get tiresome. So instead I say just vest to save space, yeah. Now, uh, for you to know, you know, all of the different semantic uh, abbreviations that I propose, I would have to share a document with you. That 2015 uh, article has like 20 of them. Now it's sort of up to 50 or something. Um, uh, but I'm very happy to do that. Uh, so now let's look at this series again. So uh, here I have, you know, this is the, the kind of mother character of the series. So it specifies the syllable type. And then the middle Chinese is the reading in middle Chinese of that specific character, right? Okay, so then we have uh, our friend Vestimentum A. Uh, and then we could have Tumulus A. And you see, the point is I'm writing them all Pe, right? Because the character itself isn't telling you the tone or the manner of articulation. So I think as a romanization of the character, we should just write the syllable type and some and the semantic. Yeah. So here's tumulus. Okay. And then there's manus. And then I'm assuming I've tried to choose Latin words that are obvious, like that I think anyone who knows uh, modern European language will, will know. Uh, so I hope that works, right? Uh, and then here's Pez A, uh, which doesn't get shortened because Pez is already pretty short. Uh, and then Lapis A. Generally speaking, I at least cut off the case endings because I don't think it's very important for the Romanization of, Ch of Chinese whether <laughs> what the gender of something was or the declension class of it in Latin. <laughs> and also, the stem is what you'll know from the modern European yeah. languages, right? So uh, this is just my you know, proposal of, of it. You can tell me whether you think it, it's nice or not. Yeah. So now we can do the same with uh, this one. So we have here core Q, and then we have uh, granum Q, and then gamma Q, and serpens Q. Yeah. Uh, if there's, I mean, I don't know, if anyone wants me to say more, like to point out that gamma means gem or something, then I can do that. But uh, otherwise, I'm assuming that though some of you know the Chinese characters, some of you know the Latin, and, and the, the semantics aren't why we're here anyhow. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and then, uh, uh, yeah. So, last uh, of these examples, just, you know, to be systematic about it. So, this one's not. Right, so then we have uh, eco knock and bambus knock and knock orbs. And now, why have I moved it over here? 
It's because it's on the right. Yeah. So I'm also telling you the sort of structure of the character with this romanization in the similar way that we do when we romanize Marion, right? Uh, okay. And then here's Femina, not, uh, and then that's what you know this series would look like romanized. Yeah. Uh, okay. So now I move on to sub series. Uh, and this is, I don't know, I, I think being able to capture this kind of structure is one reason why I uh, like to romanize them, you know, to remind ourselves that, that uh, Shakespeare series aren't flat and, and, and this romanization can capture the kind of nested structure of the Shakespeare series. Okay, so this, this we looked at before, right? This is, so... Uh, uh, we've seen this in the context of reminding ourselves, or I'm, I'm reminding you now that we've seen this Shaken series in the context of me describing that the fact that there is an A-B distinction, right? So these characters are A characters and those characters are B characters. Uh, and then these are the, the middle Chinese readings of them we've seen before, yeah? So uh, now we try, we can romanize it. So the first one is, uh, is is Q Q A Y yeah, but then all the characters on the right here are type B syllables yeah. So then I think we can actually you know uh, again sort of inspired by uh, Sumerian in terms of convention we can say that the K uh, magnum yeah uh, is equal to uh, uh, K with a superscript B, where the superscript B is telling you that this phonetic is specifying that it's a type B syllable. Yeah. So when a uh, old Chinese person was reading, we can, you know, presume that if they saw this character, they knew, oh, it's syllable type K and or A, right? And it's uh, it's a type B syllable, whatever that was for them. Okay? That information is built into the structure of the of the characters. Okay. So um, now I'm looking at this series, which we've seen before. It's the Knock series, right? So uh, now as this kind of graph, this network diagram, um, and it has the subseries. Uh, now we look at the romanization, not not the romanization. Sorry, the Middle Chinese readings. Of these characters, and over here we have uh, nya, na, nya, cha, uh, nya, cha. Okay, so they're almost all uh, type B, but this one's uh, type A. So actually, it's not telling you anything about type A B, but it is telling you that the syllable is somehow not. Yeah, coming off of that's you know to just be explicit about it. If a character like this one is built from this as, as it's phonetic, all it's telling us is it, its syllable type is not, right? Whereas we go over here and we have Nick and we have Peck uh, and we have Nick, Nick, yeah? And then these uh, are different vowels, yeah? Now you, you can't know yet, uh, what those middle Chinese vowels go back to, but the answer is a schwa, yeah? So um, <clears throat> these are our sort of provisional uh, reconstructions uh, where, you know, um, we should say they're not necessarily back in the art reconstructions, they're heuristic reconstructions for this slide, right? Uh, but so we have B not, A not, B not, B not, yeah? But then over here we have this schwa vowel. Yeah? So it's so in a sense uh, we have a violation of the Shaishan hypothesis if you know you're going from like this character to this character. You'd say, oh no, this is a problem because the rhyme here is not, and the rhyme here is sorry, the rhyme here is ah, or and then the rhyme here is up, right? But uh, you know, I'm going to. Proposed that sort of historically speaking, 
the first time, or I mean, this is a sort of a fantasy, you know, we don't, we don't know the person who did it, but we're seeing evidence of it, right? The first time someone had to write the syllable uh, nuk with the schwa, there already existed some character for nuk. Uh, and so they said, oh, well, you know, I guess I should use the, the, the wrong vowel, right? But uh, added some, you know, indication of the phonetic in order to specify the morpheme in question. And then that becomes a new, you know, subseries in this case, but it specifies the different vowel, right? So, uh, so if we're going to romanize it, then we say that this uh, phonetic character is not, and then this one, which seen as, this is what I want to capture is that these subseries are kind of genus face, right? They look back to their own mother character, in which case uh, it's it's uh, not uh, with latter, uh, which is uh, like hidden or something like that. Uh, but then as a phonetic in its own right, it's specifying that the vowel is uh, uh, schwa. And uh, one thing I think that this uh, captures, which is an important thing methodologically, but I just think it's also true, which is a Chinese character can always be uniquely analyzed as having two components, one phonetic and one semantic. So there's a, there's, you, you'll hear about, if you, you know, read around, oh, this character has two semantics, or this character has two phonetics. And actually, Xu uh, Shen wrote the show in Jiezi, he talks like that sometimes. Uh, but but I'm proposing that that uh, we should only have recourse to that uh, in extremis, right? That if it's possible, if you look at a character like this, you 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 know you may say, oh, it has uh, oh sorry. If you look at a character developed from this one, let me say uh, let me go back and say like if you look at this character, you might say, oh, the this in the middle is a phonetic. And then there are two semantics, or you know, you, you might see it as having three parts somehow. Yeah. And I'm saying, don't ever do that, right? Always decide this character has two parts, unless it's one of the basic characters like this one. Yeah. There are either a character is a kind of mother of a of a whole series, or it's composed of two parts. Those are the only two options. Wait, sorry, so why is it like the, the map also like composed of two parts because it has like graphs on top of it? So would it be also possible to combine it? Uh, it? Like in a case by case basis, yes, right? Uh, but then, uh, you know, you tell me, uh, so this is grass on top of stone, right? So your options are, uh, is grass the right? And stone the semantic, or stone the fed, and grass the semantic. And uh, um, I'm not an expert in paleography, but my understanding is this character cannot be analyzed in that way. So instead, you should see it as uh, grass on top of a stone. <laughs> yeah. And, and, and then if, if someone knows what it actually means, <laughs> then oh, this is, means like similar or something, right? Is that its rule? Yeah. Yeah. Like yeah. Yeah, which means like similar. Yeah. Yeah. So um, I don't remember if, you know, um, generally speaking, the, the kind of mothers of phonetic series actually go back to oracle bone inscriptions uh, and can be seen as iconic, right? Which is to say, like, um, uh, actually, this is kind of what my evening lecture was sort of about two years ago at the summer school, um, is if you have like, um, oh gosh, what's a nice example? Um, the, 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 the question is sort of, the moment you use the Rebus principle, which is this principle of, uh, you know, using like, using, if like writing the English word I, first person pronoun, if I write it with a picture of an eyeball, right? That's the rebus, right? And, and all phonetic 
uh, what I would call them, all phonetics, all uh, uh, semantic determiners are applications of the Rebus principle, right? So the moment you use the Rebus principle, you're not in the realm of the iconic anymore, right? Uh, but uh, if you're in the realm of the iconic, it's not correct to analyze things as having subcomponents. Let me make an example. Maybe there's a, is there a, no, I can't uh, draw, okay. So no, here's something, yeah. So let's say I have uh, uh, this, and uh, and it represents the morphine in English uh, house. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and then I have another character. We'll call it character. And this one, maybe we will say, represents door. Yeah. I, I don't know anything about English vowels, so uh, <laughs> forgive me. Door. <laughs> That's star. <laughs> anyway, okay. We go to the house. Okay. So the point I'm making is to analyze this. So we're in Oracle Bone land, right? To analyze this when it's still iconic as like somehow composed of the symbol house is a mistake. It's not, it's a drawing of a door, right? Okay, yeah, I, I think I get it. Yeah. Um, it's just like a, a grass on top of a stone, like, and lots like grass and stone. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, if yeah. you like. Oh, we can say, I, I, I'm almost saying, you know, you play, you know, when you, you come to my party, you play by, by my rules, right? And my rules are the only way to split a Chinese character is you have to end up with one half that's a semantic and one half that's a phonetic. So if you can't do that, you're not allowed to split the character, regardless of what you're tempted to do, you know, in your fantasy life, right? <laughs> um, and here too, it doesn't work fully smoothly, but you're saying, well, it's just uh, one letter different, so. Oh, right. this, yeah. this is, yeah. no, like, so you're asking about this violating the tracing hypothesis. Yeah. You're right. This violates the tracing hypothesis. So, so now the question is, if we were a Popperian, we would have to say, we have falsified the hypothesis. It turns out that doing Chinese historical phonology is impossible. Yeah. Okay, goodbye. <laughs> right? Well, I mean, you know, this is just like an <laughs> extension of your thought that some characters are not uh, opposite. You could also say that uh, this uh, the blue group is not formative. Oh yeah, you can I mean, like like you could yeah. So I mean, if you do it there, then you could also if you do it to the left, you could also do it to the right. Yeah, I see what you're saying, and and this is how I would say is is a, you could say this character has an arbitrary relationship with this character. This one is the mother of the Nock family. And this one is the mother of the Nook family, and they have nothing in common otherwise, right? That would be fine with me. And actually, I would say that in a sense, this is that we have, you know, like like in other realms of linguistics, people have two inclinations. There's the lumpers and there's the splitters, right? So if you're a lumper, generally speaking, you would say this is all one Shisham series, yeah. And if you're a splitter, you'll say, this is one tracing theory, and this is another tracing series. And I'm sort of trying to say, I think we can have our cake and eat it too, by recognizing that Shaitran series are structured. Yeah. And then, uh, now, now we still have the problem that this series violates the Shaitran hypothesis. Uh, but I think we can kind of at least, um, how can I say, like circumscribe the parameters of violation, which is that the only edge that's actually violating the patient hypothesis is this one. Does that make sense? It's because, because like, like this and this have the same run. This and this have the same run. This and this have the same run. 
this and this have the same one, this and this have the same one. So it's only here, it's only this connection where we're where we're violating the efficient hypothesis. And then I think that you know the explanation ultimately is historical, which is like somebody wanted to write enough and they only had not available to them uh, because uh, you know because uh, uh, the, the the paleography of Chinese character was not born full grown out of the head of Zeus, right? Uh, it it needed to kind of what feel from stone to stone to use a <laughs> to use a Chinese uh, saying. Uh, and, and that means that we sort of expect there to be some moments where they had to violate the, the rules in, in, in a sense, right? Um, but uh, partly actually, this is my, let's say, uh, this is my attempt, if you like, this romanization to, 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 <laughs> to sublimate the Shaysheng hypothesis, right? Which is say like, the Shaysheng hypothesis allows us to get this far. And then we see, what is actually the relationship between uh, members of a Shesheng series, and that uh, sometimes it specifies more than homoorganic initial and rhyme, like we saw uh, with the AB distinction. Yeah. And sometimes it, in a sense, uh, specifies less because, because this character, if you think of it as the mother of this whole thing, you know, would have to have like an underspecified vowel, right? But the other thing I would say is, come on, schwa and a ah are are not. It's not. It's not like you know, o and i. You know, <laughs> uh, and I think there 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 is a rationality to it in that way, right? Where like a kind of pragmatic rationality. Somebody needs to write not, and they turn to not. They don't turn to nok or to you know, sprung or something. Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, but the, 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 yeah, which is to say, and this is what Axel Schussler would say, there is no Shishan hypothesis. It was an entirely contingent, pragmatic uh, history, right? Like individuals were trying to write words and they made pragmatic decisions based on what words had already been written. And there's no way to divine principles, yeah? And I think that has a kind of moment of truth to it. And we're seeing that here, but on the other hand, we need a Shaytan hypothesis because, because we can't ask the, the people you know, what they were doing. So we, we need to have a sort of strong phonetic hypothesis and then see where it has to be violated. Yeah. And then is and if those violations are kind of costly or not. Yeah. And then I think one thing that um that you'll realize is like uh, I've had to give up the Shaytan hypothesis here, right? Whereas other people would say, yeah, well, velars and glottals uh, occurring in the same. Uh, series is, is also a violation, but you know, these things happen, right? So it's a question of like, uh, uh, which kind of, kind of for aesthetic reasons, which violations do you tolerate? Yeah. And then I'll, I'll give you an example from my childhood, which is I was told you can't divide by zero when I was like in whatever seventh grade, right? And I felt like this was, this was, you know, oppression. It's like, no, I want to divide by zero. Or I, I at least want to be told something other than, you know, you just can't do it, right? So then in college, I found out, of course, you can do it if you want, right? The, but it has certain negative consequences, which is that like all numbers equal all other numbers, right? So like, <laughs> basically, if, if, you, if you have a system where there's only one number, which you could call zero, then you can divide by zero, yeah. But you can't do anything. You can't count, for instance, yeah. <laughs> uh, so, uh, so I think I would say the same thing, which is like, 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 um, how can I bring it back to this? Is like, if so, I think the uvular hypothesis. I think that in that case, being dogmatic and sticking to the Shaytan hypothesis is still profitable. I think it's still adding, you know, uh, insight. It's still sort of juicy. To embrace the uvular hypothesis, yeah. Whereas uh, here, uh, what would the analog be? The analog would be proposing a new vowel or something like 
Like, how would we manage to make the Schaefer hypothesis work in this case? I don't think there's, I, I, I don't think it's worth it. It doesn't look promising to me. Uh, instead, I think it's better to say, look, sometimes they violate the Schaefer hypothesis and it's not that big a deal. Yeah. Uh, but I think that th this test of like, you know, I, like Axel Tristel would say uh, to, to Baxter and Cigar about the uvular hypothesis, he would say, look, sometimes they violate the Schrodinger hypothesis. It's not that big a deal, right? Uh, I say that about this case. You know, when, when is it okay to, to say that? When is it not okay to say that? That, like, that will, that's either an aesthetic choice or you can say history decides, the history of the discipline decides. Uh, but here, it's nice for you that the, the ones with Trois cluster. Exactly. So, yeah. Yeah, it's not, not random. That's, yeah, exactly. Your nesting is a good uh, extra. I think it's, I think the nesting here is doing a good job of letting you have your cake and eat it too, yeah. right? Yeah, that's why I'm uh, trying to sell you on the idea. Uh, so, anyhow, so we can Romanize here. Uh, now, and no, I, oh, I already showed this slide, yeah. So let's uh, continue along. So yeah, so this is how, you know, I'm, now I'm representing this, this process of nesting, right? So we have uh, here not, and then, uh, so deep over, I get rid of the ending, so deep not, and then this left over not equals not, and then we can have sole not, and we can have not for, and so on. And then it, 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 you always are getting an analysis of the character as composed of one semantic and one phonetic, right? Um, and then uh, just to point out that we have some theories on Fay, but in this case, I can't figure out any reason for it. So I'm just using a subscript too, right? So uh, we have the characters that come directly off the mother, uh, and then we have uh, okay, then we have this one, which is aqua, aqua pay, uh, and then that, then the aqua pay you put a, a fem underneath it. But I don't know why they did that. Like I like as far as I know, there's no there's no phonetic further phonetic specification that's being made by that move. So in those cases, I would index it with a, a, a number. But maybe you know you you will figure out a reason for it. Uh, and and this is uh, another reason that I think this kind of romanization is good, and which is the sort of thing that people uh, you know do in Sumerian. Is then we can then we can have an article where you say I think pay two should actually be whatever uh, <laughs> you know some further specification. Okay, so uh, so just this is you know. I think a nice way of kind of presenting a Chinese character. So we have the character itself, the romanization of the character, right? So that's just telling me the analysis of the character into its semantic and its phonetic. And, uh, and then the middle Chinese transcription. And uh, the nice thing I think about this presentation is if you know uh, a little bit about uh, Chinese historical phonology, then using these two, you can reconstruct the the old Chinese uh, morphine, right? Like in this case, uh, we know that uh, it must have an R in the middle and that it must be aspirate. So then we, we, we would um, Romanize, oh, sorry, we would reconstruct, you know, star T H R I W. Uh, and then I think that's, I don't know, that's, or one thing that I find frustrating in general when I read historical linguistics, is when someone gives me a starred form and I don't have the power to generate that starred form myself on the fly, right? And then, um, uh, you know, the, the answer is usually, well, you know, if you study as my PhD student for 10 years, then you'll know why I reconstructed that way, yeah? Um, and so this is my attempt to also kind of shorten that distance, is if, if I give you the Romanization and the Middle Chinese reading, uh, then, you know, relatively easily, uh, you should be able to generate a, at least, uh, acceptable old Chinese reconstruction yourself. Yeah. Uh, 
Uh, yeah, and I promise to use this convention hereafter, but I'm actually not going to keep that promise very well. Yeah, okay. So uh, now your first assignment, choose a Shechem series and then Romanize the series following my conventions. Yeah. Okay, so, you know, I mean, I, I have no power to make you do that, but uh, if, you, if some of you come back tomorrow and say, oh, here's my homework, then I'll be very pleased, yeah? And then I'll just uh, tell you how to do it. Uh, well, you could use um, my uh, 2015 article to get some Latin uh, abbreviations, but I don't think it's a big deal, right? Like, you can use different Latin than I use, or you could do it in Swedish or something. Um, and uh, as far as where to find Chechen series, um, you know, I, if you have a favorite place, <laughs> please go there. Uh, but uh, I have made a wiki book that you can find by Googling something like GSR phonetic series or something. GSR is for Grammatica Serica Recensa, uh, which is a book by um, uh, Banner Carlgren. Uh, and it lists uh, all everything according to Shishan theories. And then that will also link you to other wiki books. So uh, I've made one for Cogren, one for Schussler, and one for Baxter Cigar, uh, trying to present uh, about 9,000 characters in each case, uh, according to the analysis of those different authors. Now they're, they're flat, right? Like those authors prevent, present their like flat series. And then generally speaking, Cogren is a splitter and uh, Schuffler is more of a lumper and Bagner Cigar are more of, of lumper still. But then you can uh, do the, and that's the, the whole point of the assignment, right? You can do the uh, substructure analysis yourself just based on inspection, just based on how the character looks you know, on your computer screen. Um, so that's uh, an assignment that I propose. Uh, and that's the end of this presentation about uh, romanizing uh, Chinese characters. Uh, are there any questions? We should romanize like the modern Chinese pronunciation. I'm not so sure what you mean. Like romanize like, the characters. So can I just take like like modern Chinese yeah, Chinese series as well? I mean, I don't quite understand the question. This is a modern Chinese series. Yeah. 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 That's, that's yeah, yeah. 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 Okay. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, and, and it like the chances are nine out of ten that the Shechem series you, you choose based on you know the font that your computer makes will will be correct. Yeah, uh, there are notes actually on my wiki book about places where people disagree, but not very comprehensively. Yeah, and then it might be that uh, you know that because like sometimes characters end up looking similar for purely graphic reasons. Sometimes uh, uh, two characters look dissimilar for purely graphic historical reasons, which is say there is some risk involved in, in using you know purely modern forms of the characters, but uh, no one is going to die. So <laughs> the risk is very small. It, it's just an exercise for you know an assignment for tomorrow. Yeah. Or I mean also for another day if you want. Uh, but it's an assignment if you want to do it. Okay. Uh, any other questions? Otherwise, I'll move on to the next presentation. Any questions online? Oh, yes, it's yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. So it's, it's about this slide. Like the the last character of this slide, like the the heart is like below the 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 big one. So yeah. how? Uh, yeah. But why, when it comes to, um, it comes to a purely um, romanization, then why, why the heart is on the top, but it's not like, um, like downstairs. Yeah. So what I actually do, uh, and and I'm not totally married to this, uh, but uh, I use the colon to mean that it's below. Uh, and I use the dots to mean uh, oops, the dots to mean they're next to each other, uh, left and right. Yeah, uh, and then I I think I use a little X if one's inside the other one. 
that's all described in the um, in the 2015 article. But I also don't think it really matters because the only thing that matters from a linguistic perspective is analyzing it into a phonetic and a, and a semantic, right? Uh, but I do think that well, we might as well keep track of this information uh, for you know for the people who who are less used to reading Chinese characters. Um, but I think that you know, for me visually, uh, the difference between a dot and a colon doesn't draw attention to itself, so it's kind of nice, yeah. Uh, and it's nice to say superscript doesn't mean on top. Superscript means is the semantic component. But I think I think it's like. Also. Yeah, yeah. I mean, if you, so I do this all using LaTeX, and it takes me hours and hours and hours. <laughs> so uh, I would maybe encourage you even to do it by hand. You can. Yeah. Hi. Sorry. Uh, I still don't understand how we are supposed to make the transcription. So we just, for instance, in Pleco, like we look for a classical Chinese character, like, and and then we go from there. Like I don't understand. Okay, here's, let me just uh, do one here, actually. So this is Google. So I type in something like GSR character, oops. GSR character, GSR character, wiki book. Hopefully this works. Yeah, character list for Carlin's GSR. So this is the wiki book I made. So I'm just gonna, Click randomly. Th at the top is the cross reference to Schussler, but I'm just going to click randomly. Okay, so here's series 53. Uh, and then it's who, 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 yeah. So now you know it's a uvular series, yeah. Uh, so now the first problem you'll have is what rhyme to reconstruct, yeah? Because uh, you don't know. So what I suggest you do is just click on the character and then it takes you to the wiki book entry. Yeah? And then we go down to uh, the pronunciation uh, and we see that, whoops, we see that uh, Baxter and Cigar reconstructed with an ah, yeah? And Zhang Zheng Shangfeng also reconstructs it with an ah, yeah? So uh, now, I mean, you might want to check one other character in the series or something like that, um, but now you're already at the point where you can say this syllable type is QA, right? Is everyone on board with that? Okay, so then if you want to romanize things, so let's go back. Uh, like if we want to romanize this one, uh, the third one, uh, so 0053D, if we want to romanize uh, that third one, it's going to be a, a, a birdie <laughs> under the phonetic. Yeah, so then it would be uh, something like ka, uh, colon, uh, of, or office, yeah. So is that clear now? Yeah, like you can choose your favorite Sheshan series and you can romanize it. Uh, so I'm expecting that you know, the homework might be if you just write the character, then you write the romanization, and then you write maybe the middle Chinese, and, and then I forget even what it was, which tone it was. Yeah. I, I, I don't get it, uh, how the gu changed to the, 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 <clears throat> the QA oh, things okay. on the whiteboard. So I don't uh, really get it. let me take it in reverse order now. For the rhyme, I just looked up the answer in Wikibook, right? I just said Baxter and Cigar reconstruct ah and Zhang Zhen Shang from reconstruct ah. So who am I to disagree? So that's how I get the ah, right? Now the question is, how do I get the Q? The answer is I look at the series and I say we have a mixture of uh, stops and fricatives. Yeah. 
we have a mixture of stops and fricatives. So uh, that's characteristic of a uvular series, which is what I covered yesterday. Yeah. But look, you may make mistakes, right? Like, so don't, don't mm -hmm. sweat it. Shall we look at one more? Oh, yes. Sorry, what, what are we looking at? This H is the... So actually, yeah, no, the, this, is a this is a problem, actually. This is using Baxter's system. Yeah. So his H is my H with the thing under it. So yeah, so there will be some problems, but um, but uh, I think that you know it's good to get your hands dirty. Um, let's do let's do let's yeah. These some of these are too easy. Yeah. Oh, but uh, yeah. Uh, I know. Let's look look at this one. This one's really easy, so it'll be clear. Yeah, the fish series. Okay, so um, so in this case, I'll just tell you the answer. Uh, so yeah, so this is Baxter's reconstruction, which for me would be this. Uh, don't worry too much about that. But in any case, uh, it uh, should it will reconstruct to. Uh, na uh, in type B, right? Because if you look at it, all of those characters are type B. Yeah. Uh, and then how do you know it's ah? You just go look in, uh, you know, for the answer in the, the Wiktionary entries for those relevant characters. Uh, so this is the syllable type. Uh, and then uh, like, so, so, so fish uh, is, the, the kind of mother character is just this now, uh, but then uh, like, oh, like uh, the, the second one is, uh, is water and then the fish, right? So then it's just gonna be aqua and then dot and then now B. I feel like there's something less than overwhelming enthusiasm for this project. Yeah. Point. Well, this is a rare time that actually the session series is over specified or with the character. Well, I, that uh, hasn't really same. been, as, as far as I know, that hasn't been really well studied. And actually, like if you look at this one, Schussler and Baxter and Cigar combine these two series. So part of it's a question of like, if you're a splitter, you will tend to get more over-specified series. Whereas if you're a lumper, you'll tend to get less over, less, less over specified. 67, well, what do you do? Maybe just- uh, Yeah, 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 no, uh, it's gonna be hard though. So watch out because it's <laughs> with an S. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> uh, but, but you see that the, uh, the, that the fish is in there, yeah? Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> so now you can see both why Carl Rune split it? Because he said it's it's a totally different initial, totally different rhyme, yeah. But you can also see why Schussler and Baxter sort of are combining because they said, no, look, it's got the fish in it. Yeah. So what do they do? Do they have an SP four? They they have an SP one. Then the oh, Yeah, no, they have they they reconstructed snum. Those those that come out with an S, they reconstruct snum. But I would still reconstruct. So so I would end up. This is, you know, just saying, what would I end up doing? I would end up for this series, I mean, not with no specification of A or B, because these two with the S are, are type A, so, yeah. So, so I think at the, you know, at the core level, what does fish tell you? All it tells you is it's a, it's a velar nasal with the rhyme up. That's what I think. Uh, but if you're romanizing Carl Grin's interpretation, then you would end up specifying I'd be here, right? Could you please show us again how you uh, access this document and then the Wiktionary? Well, this document is the Wiktionary, yeah? And I got to it by Googling GSR character list wiki book. Oh, so this is the wiki book. 
And then each of the characters in it is a live link to Wiktionary. So you can click on anything, right? So like, yeah. let's actually just see what happens. We can click on this, this, this one, this, yeah. And then it takes us to Wiktionary. And then we can go down to, uh, actually here you can say, Wiktionary says that it's a phonetic, a phonosemantic compound with fish as the phonetic. And uh, I don't even know what this means, uh, but as the semantic, yeah. Uh, Core, grass, no, wheat. Oh yeah, wheat, yeah, right, yeah. So, uh, so it's something that sounds like fish and means something to do with wheat. Yeah, and then if we look at the reconstructions uh, down here in Old Chinese, Baxter and Cigar reconstruct sna, and Zhang Zhengshan song also reconstructs sna. So Wiktionary has a very six vowel school um, bias. They always give uh, Baxter and Cigar reconstructions and Zhang Zhengshan song reconstructions, uh, but that's a okay with me. I don't know who who did this. I mean, there's some some kid with too much time on his hands somewhere. Uh, <laughs> Who put all these you know, hundreds, hundreds of characters in here, and then they also have like lots of dialect readings and paleographic information, and so you know, Wiktionary is is a good place uh, to. Uh, but one thing it doesn't give you is Shesham analysis, so that's what you know why you can go to my wiki book, and then there are these links here. Yeah? Um, but anyhow, that's uh, yeah, I don't know. That's that's. Uh, tells you how you can go about doing your homework if you want to do it, yeah. Uh, which is to say, uh, for the, for the uh, initials, do the best you can based on what you've learned so far. For the rhymes, look them up in Wiktionary. And then use the Shishin analysis, either of Progren or of Schussler or Baxter Cigar, as you find in one of the relevant uh, wiki books. And then uh, try to analyze one Shishin series using my romanization. So then you get the, you get the initial from your knowledge. Uh, you get the rhyme from looking it up in Vaccine Cigar or, or Zhang Zhang Shangfang. Uh, and you get the Latin from my uh, 2015 article, or I can send you, you know, something more uh, updated, uh, but actually you can write in, it in English if you want or whatever, yeah. Uh, the, the point is just to, uh, experience the analysis of characters into phonetics and semantics in a way that is you know uh, modeling the reading experience of uh, a an old Chinese uh, reader uh, and potentially to explore some of this substructure right like uh, in the in the series you choose is there a, a subseries if there is a subseries do you notice anything that that subseries seems to further specify phonetically. Yeah, that's the, the point. 